Let's get it. Mike Sempervivi here with you for the next hour talking about professional wrestling, which is something we do every single day here on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Tune in, iHeart, American Forces Radio, sportsbyline.com, over-the-air affiliates like KMAV, 99 KMSR, and the Mightier 1090, podcast, replays on Sirius XM, video streaming on Twitch or YouTube. However you're joining me today, I'd just like to say thank you. Hopefully, wherever you are, it's sunny outside, and if not, hopefully it's sunny inside your mind. The big boss man, Brian Alvarez, not here because it is a Friday. That's all right. I got filthy Tom Lawler, who's going to be joining me shortly. Made the joke yesterday that if Brian's not here, maybe some big news will hit. Maybe we'll find out exactly what is going on with WWE's TV deal when it comes to Monday Night Raw. That did not happen. Although we have some news via the Wrestling Observer newsletter when it comes to the TV But we do also have news, it's just not very fortunate news coming out of Stanford today, as Mackenzie Mitchell announced on her social media that she has been released from WWE and her backstage role as an interviewer in NXT. She says, quote, today I was released by WWE. I met my husband, moved across country from Connecticut to Florida for NXT, and met friends that became like family. I've always said and firmly believe when one door closes, another opens. Mackenzie, who is married to NXT announcer Vic Joseph, they got married in October of 2022, has been with WWE since September of 2019 after a short stint in Impact Wrestling doing the same role. WrestleNomics' Brandon Thurston tweeted today that WWE has laid off more corporate employees as well. Multiple, According to multiple people at the company, this follows layoffs of more than 100 employees in September following the closing of the TKO merger. And as the show goes on today, we'll let you know about any other on-air talent that gets released. We've got a big weekend of wrestling coming up, as we always do, starting with tonight, WWE SmackDown, AEW Rampage, and CMLL. Tomorrow, Collision, and a bunch of Japanese shows we can get into with Filthy Tom Lawler when we get back on Wrestling Observer Live. Welcome back to the show. Mike Sempervivi here with you. We do this show right here for an hour at a time every single day, but if you want us 24-7, you can find us on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it, at Sempervivi, at Filthy Tom Lawler, and at Sports Byline USA. Don't forget, at Jim Valley as well, the King of Recovery will be back live on Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. You can also watch the show for free on Jim's YouTube page as well. Well, he'll interact with you and answer your questions and be all nice and all that to you. I assume he is at least. I don't don't think Jim would go off on anybody, but you can check that show out. I'd also like for you to check out the wrestling news, everything you need to know to get your day started or get you up to date in the world of professional wrestling. Get you your favorite wrestling review pod like Dave and Brian so you can hear them argue. Daily free in between 5 and 15 minutes long. No clickbait, no speculation, no rumors, no paywall. Just the wrestling news. For more information, you can go to thewrestlingnews.com and at Wrestling News AV on Facebook and Twitter. Without any other further ado, I got to bring in Filthy Tom Lawler, but I do so in asking you about the biggest controversy taking place in all of professional wrestling this week. Where do you weigh in on whether it's the company or it's the consumer when it comes to recording the AEW overruns on the DVR, Tom? 100% Brian is in the wrong. Oh, wait, wait. No, because now you're putting me in the wrong as well, too. Why? As a professional, res- as a paid professional wrestling journalist, it's his job to cover wrestling, no matter if YouTube TV screws it up, which, by the way, it's his choice to use that service, right? He well, could it is. watch this through a number of other ways he could watch it live he could also log in every day and look and just go oh wait a minute okay AEW dynamite's on at the same time every single day what's on right after that and then click record 
on what comes after that. Uh, well, how about for the average consumer, though? How about for the average person? Take it out of Brian's hands and the and the professional journalists and just put it in the hands of the consumer. Do you put that all on them, too? Or do you just go ahead and try to fix it from, you know, AEW or however that works side? Well, if you're a company, I would assume you would want the most eyes on your product and having it not available uh, to a portion of the public who has already chosen to try to watch that could inevitably turn some viewers away. So as a company, they should be shoring that up. Now, whether that is a communication issue on the part of the streaming services and AEW, whether it's a communication issue on the part of just the streaming services or vice versa, just AEW, I don't know what the deal is, but... Yeah, as a company, that should be handled. But as a professional, you should be searching out new wrestling, not only just watching what's available to you. And if that means you have to search out something that you missed because your DVR didn't capture it, then so be it. Hey, the people, band, the people band are is looking short for fanatic. Okay, be fanatical about your wrestling people. The way I look at it, Mike, we are here to record history. Right. Documented do you think and such? Yes. Do you think the historians of the past would have gone? Ah, oh, well, that battle, that area that Genghis Khan just took over. Uh, that's outside our jurisdiction. I don't want to. I'm not going to learn about that. I'm not going to search that out. No, no, Mike. It is our job to provide what happens inside that squared circle, outside of those ropes, backstage. It's our job to document that and provide that to the people so that future generations can learn from and choose not to make these same mistakes. So TNA, I urge you MLW. I urge you CMLL, any company with a television deal, NWA. I urge you on that CW app, communicate with the services communicate with the streaming providers out there and make sure that we can watch your product my god we should have had god bless america playing in the background or something like that as you went along on that thing we should probably get away from the dvr thing now and actually talk about you know documenting wrestling that's taking place which begins tonight with wwe smackdown live tonight from the barclays center in brooklyn new york SmackDown's version of the fallout from last Saturday's Survivor Series War Games. They've announced a total of one match for tonight. Kevin Owens is going to take on Grayson Waller. Also on the show, U.S. champion Logan Paul will make his television return. And Randy Orton is going to make an appearance after accepting the invitation extended to him by general manager Nick Aldis. Locally advertised dark matches, Cody Rhodes and Dominic Mysterio and Seth Rollins and Shinsuke Nakamura. While we will not give you any spoilers when it comes to AEW Rampage, we will give you this possible spoiler reported earlier on today by PW Insider. Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson are expected back on tonight's show. Gallows had been out with a knee injury while Anderson was just I don't know, chilling somewhere. Uh, AJ Styles has not been seen since getting beaten down and taken in an ambulance to a local medical facility after running uh, across Jimmy Uso and Solo Soko on the September 22nd SmackDown, which opened the door for LA Knight to come in and team with John Cena against Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa at Fastlane. So that is that. Now, I did mention at the very beginning, there is news on the TV deal as it relates to WBD at least in this week's Wrestling Observer newsletter which is up for subscribers on the main page right now quote Paul Levesque was not at Raw this week because he and Nick Khan were in Los Angeles trying to finalize the new Raw television deal. They were hoping for $400 million, but analysts believe it will be closer to $387 million per year. Poor babies, obviously. For most of the negotiation period, the idea was FX, owned by Disney as the leader with Netflix, NBC Universal's USA Network, WBD, and Amazon Prime all being talked about. 
Regarding WBD, Dave noted, quote, would be the game changer in many ways if it had happened. The WBD version told to him or told to many this past week is that Nick Khan last went to WBD in October with a pitch and was turned down, end quote. He went on to write that those in WWE constantly had WBD as a long shot for the reason they believed WBD owned a percentage of AEW. In the deal announced this past September, WWE is going to receive $287 million a year from the USA Network to air SmackDown beginning in October of 2024. If you feel bad for Nick Khan about missing out on this deal with WBD, never fear. Later in the newsletter, Dave wrote that Nick on November 22nd got himself a Thanksgiving present as he was awarded 153,676 shares of TKO, which was valued this week at about $12.3 million. So a lot there for you, Filthy, to take in. They are making a whole lot of money here. Raw still up in the air on where it will land. It seems as if WBD is going to be out of that picture right now. Where do you foresee this thing landing? FX makes a lot of sense. And personally, I would like it more than Amazon Prime because it's hard enough watching one football game there a week. That's all I'd like to do. Mike, can we get some sort of diagram, a family tree, a 23 and me? of all these television networks and where they come from and who they're now adopted by and affiliated with. Did you say Disney owns FX? They do. Yes, they, they do. do. FX used to be a Fox subsidiary, right? They just dropped yes, the it... O. <laughs> yes, yes, it was. And then right. they got FXX, which is also owned by Disney, I think. Okay. But Disney and Fox are not the same one company. No, they are not. Okay. There's going to be a quiz on this later. Just for you, Filthy. Not for the listeners. Don't you worry about that. A whole lot more to get into when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Sempervivi and Filthy Tom Lawler here with you on Wrestling Observer Live. Just had a big conversation during the break over will the olds turn into Amazon Prime if USA Network and FX and all these other channels don't get it and they take the money that's reportedly possibly conceivably out there from amazon and they put raw on there one i gotta be all right tom if they take the money and put it on there i think there's a risk that you run of losing olds that don't know and don't care about watching again the ones that don't watch football that are currently watching amazon prime i think you do risk losing some of those people even though it may be insignificant i don't know but also, if you do make that move and move it off Monday night, do you think that there's going to be an issue? Because we've seen wrestling programs get moved to other basic cable stations that are easy to find, and people just act like they have no idea what's going on. Do you think there's going to be an issue if they move not only to Amazon, but decide to move it off Monday night and put it on Wednesday or whatever? Well, I think they're undoubtedly going to lose some people. People may be like wrestling journalists who can't figure out their own DVR. <laughs> those people may not be able to figure out how to watch raw on a different night or different service. But I think most of the people who want to watch it will find a way to watch it. Now, Mike, I'm looking at the ratings for some of these Thursday night games on Amazon prime, yeah. 4.7 ratings. 9.79 million viewers for Jaguars and Saints. No, I mean, well, you know what I mean? We're talking, we're <laughs> easy not good football. Daniel, easy. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, they're not exactly. And we've got almost no, 10 million exactly... people watching this. So, you know, you keep Raw on a Monday. It ends up on Amazon Prime, which I brought up to you, is not a service that most people are going to have to buy. Even the and, olds probably have Amazon Prime. I wonder what the Friday game did. The F Black Friday game on Amazon. Black Friday did. game? Because that is, yeah, because that's outside of the normal time slot that they run. I wonder if that did gangbusters ratings or how it did, because that could provide a glimpse 
as to what happens when Raw moves to a different time slot. And if it did Maybe, so... Maybe, but here would be my Amazon. volley back to you on that is give me ratings of something else on Amazon that's not the NFL. You know what I mean? Give me they a, don't a have They don't have a lot of live programming. It's basically that and 1FC. I don't know what else is on there, but I, I believe it's mostly, you know, television shows, movies, original programming. And it's a lot better option than Netflix. Well, the one, one thing of is you don't have that churn services. possibility, I wouldn't think. That's the biggest thing is for those people that have Amazon Prime, the video aspect of it is kind of the bonus. You're using it to shop mostly, and then they give you Amazon Music or Kindle or this or that through it. So the odds of you getting sick of it or forgetting about it or, or whatever, the odds of you wanting to cut costs when it comes to some of these streaming networks, I would assume Amazon is because it's got more functional use for your everyday life is the one that you would probably cut last, right? I would say so, yeah. I would get rid of virtually every other streaming service I have before Amazon Prime just because of the value in free shipping and the amount of boxes you can get and load up on that you have to break down and put away Otherwise, your wife puts a knife to your throat. You know what Wait, I mean? Well, well, does she, like, as she holds that knife to your throat, does she whisper in your ear, you should have took the prime day for less boxes? Does she ever do I, that? Actually, what she does, she puts the knife up to my throat, much in the vein of Big Al and Tank Abbott. And then my kids go, she's going to cut your beard, Daddy. <laughs> She's going to cut your beard. For those of you that don't get the reference, don't worry. It's, it's a hell it's of a, a callback. It's a deep cut, <laughs> much like the one Big Al almost got from Tank Abbott way back in WCW days. But there are so many things, so much value, like you said, that you get out of Amazon Prime. I can't imagine you would have people cutting that you know, uh, cutting that service and cutting down on the potential viewers. Now, you're not going to have like a huge amount of people signing up for Amazon Prime um, due to WWE programming, I would imagine. But hey, well, look, it, look, if it ends up being a successful thing, those rights for the WWE network are going to be up in 2025, I think. I, I can't remember what it is. I don't have it in front of me here with when, when that deal runs out with Peacock. But I mean, there is a possibility that, Again, if things are working out well, I would because I'm assuming I'm assuming that Amazon is going to offer the most money. That's what I am going to assume, at least as compared to the linear cable channels. Right. So they're probably going to offer the most. So if this works out well for both sides, WWE now at least has somebody else other than Peacock in play to try to take the network and to try to take all the on demand stuff and all that stuff. Plus, Amazon's going to need something. They're going to need a big lead-in for this Roadhouse remake. <laughs> Why <laughs> they are they making, put out there. They're, who, are they responsible for remaking Roadhouse? Shame. Yeah. Did Why you see would the, you remake that? Are you going to remake Over the Top too? I wish. Don't do that. <laughs> Unless you get cast in it. Yeah, that'd be great. Or how about, I'd rather be cast in a new age version of Fist. The old Federation of Interstate Truckers, which was uh, Stallone's real first big hit. <laughs> Never mind. I was going to go somewhere with that, but I'm not. Where I'm going to go now is AEW Rampage also being Friday night with matches taped Wednesday night at the Target Center in Minneapolis. If you like tag team matches, this is your show. There are four of them, all multi-person matches. Eight-man tag, like I said, no spoilers here, but when I start going through these, I think it'll be pretty easy to tell who wins. Dan Housen, Hook, Orange Cassidy, and Trent Beretta against Angelo Parker, Matt Menard, and the Dark Orders, Alex Reynolds, and Evil Uno. Tom, I don't know. This one, this is the one I'm most in doubt about. Kanosuke Takeshita, Kyle Fletcher, and Powerhouse Hobbs against Jossie, Kit Sackett, and Runny D. What do you think the odds are that the uh, latter team picks up the victory? I don't want to steal a phrase from Conor McGregor, but who 
are those guys. I know who Ja C is. I don't know who the other cats are. Ja, stay out of the ring. Let those other two boys take the beating. Six-man tag, Eo Del Vigingo, Commander, and Penta El Zero Miedo against Brian Cage and the Work Horsemen. I assume that this is going to be the main event. I don't know, though, because there's also a six-woman ta six tag with Hikaru Shida, Chris Statlander, and Stuck Sky Blue against Anna oh. J, Ruby Soho, and Soraya. So that's what's planned for Rampage tonight. Yes, As a... Sir? paid professional wrestling media member who covers Rampage. I would guess if Sky Blue is in the match, that's the Rampage main event, if I had to put money on it, but I could be wrong. Looking she, at those... I think I believe she holds more Rampage main events than anyone else in the history of the show. I'd have to check, at least this year, for sure. I I know with Rampage, it doesn't really matter. It's going to do the number that it's going to do. But do you open the show again? Because I have no idea on how they filmed it or anything. Do you open the show with uh, Vikingo Commander and Penta against Cage and the Work Horsemen then? That's what I would probably do just to showcase those guys flying around. Do you watch Rampage regularly? I have to go back on DVR and never live. I, I never watch it live or rarely either but it always seems as if the show starts with guys in the ring ready to do some crazy moves so i would start off the show with that and based on prior knowledge or you know prior viewing it, good bet it does open the show collision tomorrow night live on tnt from the erie insurance arena in erie pennsylvania Three Continental Classic Blue League matches are scheduled. Claudio against Brody King, Andrade against Daniel Garcia, Brian Danielson against Eddie Kingston. I, I, look, you can, you can poke fun at Tony Khan loving battle royals and tournaments. You can point out a lot of plot holes that have led into this and have concern about what happens to guys and their pushes or lack of them coming out of this sure the matches themselves i mean it's pretty awesome you got three matches for free on tv all of which would be main events certainly on the indie scene and, and frankly looking at brian danielson and eddie kingston uh, pretty much almost anywhere, certainly in AEW, and I bet that's going to be the main event of tomorrow. But what have you thought so far for those who have not had a chance to hear you on Filthy Four Daily with Brian uh, for members of the website? What have you thought about this tournament so far, and what do you think about coming up on Saturday? Like you said, Mike, everything in ring has been great. The people who you would imagine would lose generally have lost the matches i would say you do have a big upset already with brody king defeating the current new japan strong open weight champion eddie kingston a brody king who i may add i defeated to win the new japan cup usa and win the new japan strong open weight championship facts uh -huh. yeah and much like that match was good, much like everything on Wednesday night was good, I expect the rest of the tournament's going to be awesome. We could talk about it more after the break. Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Semper, Vivi, and Filthy Tom Lawler here with you on Wrestling Observer Live. It is a filthy Friday here on the show. I don't know how filthy we're going to be getting with Ric Flair tonight. Um, we talked about the AEW Rampage card. Will they have Ric Flair's promo on there? Will they edit the promo saying that he wants all 18 to 28-year-olds without their husbands, without their boyfriends, to come up to his hotel room in classic Ric Flair style? Tom, it's Ric Flair. He is a polarizing figure at this point. Would you expect anything else other than what you heard from Ric Flair? And should they air that promo in its entirety tonight? It's hard to say in this situation what's right or wrong because, you know, if you take out his past transgressions, which you shouldn't when you view this, he really isn't saying anything that would be deemed illegal, right? He is talking he, about... Yes, he did not say 8 to 80, yeah. young, crippled, and crazy. Yes, no. He did well, not do although, that. as long as they have their mental faculties, I would imagine 
they could do whatever they want. But like, is it gross? Yeah, undoubtedly. <laughs> is this an image that I want in my mind? No, no. At twelve forty-one p.m. on a Friday, when I've got the whole weekend ahead of me, Thanksgiving's supposed to be in the past, and now all I can think about is this turkey gobbler floating around, Woo. flapping in the wind. Woo. I hope they don't air the promo, or at least they could cut that part out. I thought the promo with he and Sting and Tony Schiavone on Wednesday was phenomenal. Yes, It looked like Ric Flair was ready to cry. It looked like Sting was ready to cry. It looked like Tony Schiavone was maybe going to show an emotion. <laughs> I felt like I was going to cry. And that's the Ric Flair I want to remember. I want to remember an old grandfather, Ric Flair, out there. Not the guy Rest trying to... your grandmother's couch. <laughs> yeah. The guy, the guy that took the polyester cloth off of her couch and is now wearing it and trying to live up to the guy on the Woo Energy can. I'm sorry. I know you said it's Ric Flair. Should we expect any different? Well, people do grow and change for the better sometimes. And what maybe. In, what in his career, what in his life has given you the idea that he is. is changed or been anything other than Ric Flair? Well, I thought he really hit the nail on the head when he said the best moment in wrestling that could happen would be he and John Cena coming out to congratulate Charlotte at the end of SmackDown on beating their TV record. He said that would draw the biggest ratings, get the biggest response from the crowd. Well, he can't do it for at least two years, and God knows what happens to the Woo Energy drink at that point. Have you tried any of those? Have you seen any of those in the wild? I have I'm not. Still, I'm still here talking to you, Mike. <laughs> the answer is no. That's right. Yeah, I guess you, your esophagus is still intact. So I guess in your mind as well, too, since it is a mushroom-based drink, I believe. So, yeah, yep, the Woo Energy drink. Let's see him drink it. Let's see anybody drink it. I'd like to see any In fact, if you have, my Twitter is at SemperVivi. If you are drinking a Woo Energy drink, please, I want to see you do it. I want to see you crack the can. I want to see you take this stuff down. And I, then I want to see about an hour later, post up another video to see exactly where you're at after ingesting that. Because it may be a local medical facility. I, I'd like to find this stuff out for myself. But AEW All-In tickets went on sale. Uh, to the general public today, next August 25th at Wembley Stadium, the pre-sale began on the 27th, so they are up and at them when it comes to that. AEW Dynamite from Wednesday night. I don't believe we mentioned this yesterday, so I'll go ahead and do it now. Wednesday night's episode of Dynamite averaged 858,000 viewers on TNT, up slightly from last week. Largest viewership total for the show since October 18th, which was the last time that Wednesday, uh, they had a Wednesday Dynamite before the NBA season started, so... Not bad of a number, I don't think. Uh, you know, obviously you want to be over 900, but 858,000 I thought was better than expected. Uh, coming off of NXT, in my opinion, being lower than I would have expected uh, that number to be. So any other thoughts on any of that stuff, Tom? Yeah, Mike, were you aware that yes, Woo Energy is also the official energy drink of the Cleveland Cavaliers? Wait, what? Yeah. Fla flavors including dragon fruit, lemon, and strawberry banana. Dragon have you, fruit. Have you tried the Hulk Hogan vape? No, there's a Hulk Hogan vape? There's a Hulk Hogan nicotine vape. Which, but wait, wait, a nicotine vape? Not even a THC vape? What happened to Ric Flair? Wasn't he in the weed business? Didn't somebody license his name and likeness for like... Woo weed or whatever the hell it was called. No, it is the Ric Flair drip, I believe. Is it real like THC or is it like Delta Nine or some nonsense like that? No, I believe I believe it's the real deal. I believe it's the 
RVD, Matt Riddle approved. Real deal. The Hulk Hogan Hulkamania disposable vape. 8,000 puffs. One for every pound that Andre the Giant weighed when Hulk Hogan slammed him <laughs> at WrestleMania. Oh, God. Disposable just like his spine. Anything else to that? I'm going to try to find the flavors. Well, you got to have full flavored Hulkster, right? I wonder if they're all in like Hulkster, like, you know, the little Hulkster is the ultralight, you know? <laughs> yeah. We have, I guess we have watermelon ice, blue raz ice, cherry lemon, mint, and triple berry. Cherry I mean, lemon, mint. Really missing out on some marketing you know, chances with the flavors here on this and the Woo Energy drink. Well, yeah, you got to pair them. Obviously, you you know, so you want a good balance. It's like a cigar and a nice wine and a brandy or something like that. You want to try to find that that level balance there. But let me move over to uh, the Japanese scene here for a minute because there are a couple of things that stand out this weekend. New Japan, All Japan, Pro Wrestling Noah, Stardom, all of the big companies have shows going on. The most notable news-wise is going to be Stardom, I would assume. But one of the more interesting things is coming out of Pro Wrestling Noah where <laughs> Keno and Jinsei Shinzaki, better known to some as Hakushi, will face Manabu Soya and Tatsumi Fujinami in the main event of Saturday's show. Fujinami will turn 70 years old on December 28th. The last time he was in such a high-profile match was on January 4th at the Tokyo Dome, the pre-show Antonio Inoki tribute match where he teamed with Minoru Suzuki and Tiger Mask 4 in a loss against Satoshi Kojima one of Tom's favorite people right now, Togi Makabe and Yuji Nagata You'd think, well, man, that that was nice and damn near 70 years old. He's, he's coming back for this one, including that match. He has wrestled 13 times this year, the last one coming in a six-man tag on November 17th for his own tradition promotion. He is an amazing figure in so many ways, Tatsumi Fujinami, and physically, yeah, he looks a lot older, but I tell you what, he looks like he's in his mid fifties as opposed to pushing 70 years old, Tom. If we can, Mike, you talked about the great shape that Tatsumi Fujinami is. And let's not forget Jinsei Shinzaki, who the last time I saw him was on the Muta, one of the Muta retirement tour shows where he was in a match with Muta with Akira and some other people. <laughs> some folks. Yeah, some folks. And he was the standout in that match. Now here he is teaming with Keno, who I believe he trained. If not, he was at least a mentor to in Michinoku Pro. And I would imagine that Jinsei Shinzaki will show out once again in this match one of my favorite wrestlers to watch to this day a big fan of hakushi who if you remember if you know if you peruse the internet long enough you would realize used virtually a different finisher in every single win he had in the wwf which is a great little tidbit a great little tactic to use in the world of real fighting and sports probably best known for the praying power bomb i think that would be you know the i think that would probably be the move that some people would remember him for Manabu i would Soya. i ahead. would say the rope walk maybe that's his true. more iconic move and if anybody has ever seen this man rope walk barbed wire ropes before it's something you can never forget one of my all-time favorite comfort matches, and it has not held up over time as far as I thought it was one of the best matches of the year that year. I, I know where but, you're going, buddy. You know it. It's it's Kushi and Hayabusa, or I'm sorry, Jinsei Shinzaki and Hayabusa 
against RVD and Cebu. Was it Heat Wave 98? Maybe. Yep. I can't remember exactly what it was, but that match, I love going back and watching it. It kicks so much ass. Yeah. And apparently, because I believe uh, Jinsei Shinzaki has a kind of extensive series of notes based on his wrestling over the years, I believe they barely made it in time to actually wrestle in that match, if memory serves correct. So to do that on the fly, and that was at the time, like you said, it doesn't hold up now, but really it was kind of like revolutionary when you were watching. It was just big move after big move from guys who were also big guys. You know what I mean? Flying around out there. Hayabusa was a, a big guy. Jinsei Shinzaki is a big guy. RVD is a big guy. To say again, decept not as deceptive as some, but like Rob Van Dam is not like he's he's not a small dude. I mean, you see him in there. Just look at the matches with Jerry Lynn, you know, and Jerry Lynn, you know, was more cut up when they would go at it and everything. But RVD is like he's just yeah, he's not a small guy. He's not a monster or anything like that. And in the land of WWE, when he was there, obviously he looked a lot smaller. When you have the Billy Guns of the world running around, but yeah, it, it, it's still. And I guess he's been out of retirement. He has been out of retirement a couple times. And, you know, with some of the issues that he's had, it's nice to see him in, in one piece. And I do want to mention, because we didn't get to it yesterday, Serena Deeb is coming back, and that's nice to hear. Obviously a great technical wrestler, somebody that I think that division, I don't think she, you know, she didn't have to be pushed to the level of a Mercedes Monet or somebody like that, but certainly somebody who can help out that roster and, Fortunately, had a series of, of seizures that they apparently have taken care of now, and she is now cleared. So all of the best to Serena Deeb as she is now making her comeback. Hear the music right there. Filthy and I will be back after this break on Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Zipper, Vivi, and Filthy Tom Lawler here with you to put a bow on this Filthy Friday. Tom, we've had a lot of fun today. We've had a lot of laughs. We've hopefully informed the people on some things that maybe they didn't know before. But one thing that I know that some of the people like is Satoshi Kojima. Big bread eating somebody that he is. The king of carbohydrates. You and he will be facing off very soon for MLW. In fact, I believe it's coming up on December 7th. Do you have any words for Satoshi Kojima here on your last Wrestling Observer Live before that match? One shot is a fitting name for the show. It's only going to take one shot for me to put Kojima to sleep. You done screwed up, Kojima. Alexander Hammerstone. Uh, boy, we, we didn't talk about that on here. What is it like being a stablemate of all of these men? What is it like to be in the world of WTF? Basically, it's a lot of lifting weights and tanning. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can see that with Hammerstone, yeah. I can yeah, see that. <laughs> that's about it. Matt Cardona, Josh Bishop, MSL. We're all jacked, vascular. <laughs> what, what else you got coming up? On Saturday, I'll be fighting for the Relentless Pro heavyweight title against Kata. Sunday... Deadlock Pro in Durham, North Carolina. Me it's and awesome. West Coast Wrecking Crew taking on LeBron Calzone and Violence is Forever. Always a great show. LeBron Calzone? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to eat him up. I'm hungry too, Kojima. <laughs> oh, man. And then well, check guess... out Wrestling okay. Observer Live next week with who, Mike? The boss man, Brian Alvarez. I think. And? Oh, and me, of course. And you doing <laughs> and you doing the Daily Show. Hey, Producer Daniel, Producer John, thank you very much. And I thank you out there for listening. We shall talk to you again after a while. 